It is my pleasure this morning from New York uh, to introduce Steve Rocha. He's a child rights advocate who's been engaged in this field since 1990, a longtime campaigner. He's the founder and director of Pratyek, which is an organization that envisions every child being trained to advocate for every right for everyone. In India, Steve is national convener and founder of the Nine is Mine campaign, an initiative of, for, and by children to advocate for appropriate public investment in children. And Steve is Asia level advocacy coordinator for Edmund Rice International, which is based in Geneva, as we know. He has facilitated child led interactions with policymakers and leaders at village, state, national, and international levels, including the United Nations in Geneva and New York. My own engagement with Steve had a lot to do with his taking young people to the UN at New York at UN headquarters and helping with those projects. It's been an inspiration to me for sure and many others. So thank you again, Steve, and the floor is yours. Uh, uh, thank you, Kevin, for that uh, introduction. Let's try to see how I can, oh, here we are, okay. So uh, yes, Pratik uh, is a Hindi word for everyone. And uh, Kevin did introduce us as having a vision of every child engaging and standing for rights, every right of their own, rights of others, but rights of everyone. And the word one could also include, should also include the environment, the earth, the trees, the, the mountains and so on. And uh, in short, Pratik is about uh, creating spaces for child-led advocacy. But we actually got the word everyone while I was in Geneva. And uh, I realized that all articles of all conventions begin with the word everyone. So a right is not a right until it's given to everyone or it's shared and experienced by everyone. And, uh, and our focus then on Pratik became the last child because if the last child does get their, their rights uh, and, uh, and enjoys the rights, exercises their rights, then we can uh, be assured that everybody is enjoying it. So COP26 became a wonderful uh, platform for us to once again engage young people in the conversations that, uh, that affect them and will impact them into the future and their present as well. Uh, we look out for of opportunities where we can really ensure that the last child and every child engages with processes that matter to them. Uh, we take the inspiration from the disability movement that says nothing about us without us nothing about us children without us children. And of, of course the UN goal that says, leave no one behind. So uh, COP26 once again became another platform where we could really again emphasize the participation of every child. I'm not gonna go through this slide because uh, Budi did a lot of uh, explanation on this and so did and touch upon it. But the themes of this COP26 are gonna be nature, uh, adaptation of the loss and damage, gender, transport, science and innovation, energy, cities, regions, and built environment. But the most engaging one for us was youth and public empowerment. And we said, how best can we engage in those conversations? So we organized, uh, remember firstly that uh, our engagement with an earth rights has been right from the inception of our organization. And the E and the K of Pratik stands for an earth rights and kids' rights. And we want to actually see that, that engagement happening uh, more uh, actively and more authentically on the ground. And the sustainable goals first became our first lever to really see the link between earth rights and kids' rights. COP26 uh, COP and uh, in engagements around uh, environment then became another platform where we really saw that engagement happening. Greta's movements also uh, lifted our own engagement with young people. But remember, our, our greatest focus really uh, in India as, as Pratik is really to bring conversations across uh, these wonderful opportunities with the most marginalized. So in this com conversations we've had, we've had uh, young people who call themselves ministers of all the SDGs. But can you imagine them to be uh, from ch rescued child laborers, rescued child Traffic, uh, traffic children, uh, children rescued from uh, child marriage, children who have never been to school, children who are child laborers, 
uh, some of them who are also from elite schools as well and privileged backgrounds. But really the engagement of this conversation and engagement in these conversations was really the emphasis. So we thought of bringing up uh, networks from across the world together to what we call our first Earth Summit, ER being for us here, Edwin Rice, but uh, also Earth Rights. We're looking at the Earth itself having rights. While kids have rights, we want to see that the Earth intrinsically as a, as a being that has intrinsic rights. And many constitutions, a uh, few constitutions across the world now are slowly uh, adopting the language of Earth having rights. So we gathered uh, students from across the world. We were able to get 80 different uh, international students along with 200 of our Indian students together, uh, representing 54 countries. Uh, we followed the route of going to schools, but we went beyond that to look at any individual who is really passionate about environmental rights to come on board and share in this conversation. We got panelists from, and some of them are present here as well, uh, to talk about different aspects of uh, climate change, but with the, with, uh, with the lens of children and their rights. Uh, remember, what we're trying to do really is to work towards having uh, the world agree on a document that says uh, child right, uh, uh, children have environmental rights too. Uh, while we have the Convention on the Rights of the Child and we have optional protocols, there's no language that talks about children having environmental rights. And so uh, the move really is to, to engage in a process that would have, where the world would, would adopt and, in, and recognize that children have got environmental rights. And thanks to young people across the world uh, who are claiming that right and claiming that space in this, uh, uh, this entire uh, field of rights themselves. So thanks to all the, the, the panelists and we did this under the banner of Edmund Rice International, and many of, of you and your networks came on board with this as well. Uh, this, these were the morning panelists, the earlier was the evening panelists. We had them on different time slots because it was international, and we wanted children to be engaged in that. And we took the, the take of the focus of children. So we uh, had uh, group discussions on uh, vulnerable children, holistic development of children, the context of climate change protection and safety of children, participation in dialogues and movements, government responsibility, because at the end of the day, it's the government that is responsible for reaching these targets. And that's what our campaign, what our, what our organization is all about, government accountability and, uh, and getting young people to be part of that as well. They may not be voters, but we believe that they have a voice and their voice needs to be heard and expressed today. Uh, environmental rights of children, that's basically going to be the focus of our movement into the future, ensuring business standards for a just green world, and finally children in COP26, that summit which Anne Nicholas herself did, and the one on uh, was environmental rights of children, it was Brian Bond, uh, Kevin Cawley himself did. So following that, that happened from the 30th of September to the 2nd of October, Gandhi Jayanti, Gandhi's birth anniversary, and since then, our uh, young documenters, as well as some senior ones, uh, collated all their Google forms and responses and so on of children from across India and across the world and put together their, uh, their report or their statement now to COP26 and to other conversations happening in India and across the world. So they, uh, they joined in with uh, Greta's Earth Strike on the 22nd of October but use that as a platform to validate and to approve of their, um, their charter. So they're saying, make Earth kind feel again. So, uh, and the feel is the acronym for food. Look at conversations around food, look at conversations around education, uh, look at conversations around energy, and finally look at conversations around lifestyles. And these are the asks of the government to say, of the world, of India and of the world to say, can you keep this focus going? And these are the suggestions. But uh, let's make Earth can great again. And the great is an acronym for government responsibilities to tax stroke nations, to think of, uh, think big and beyond profit and think of the most vulnerable communities. Refuse, stop a culture that is, that promotes materialism, but also that does, cannot handle waste. Uh, look at economy and rather than looking at a, at a, a money-based economy uh, across domestic product, as they say, 
uh, one that looks at happiness, looks at health index and other social indices and stop corporate greed. Uh, GRE A is afforestation and T is about travel. So these were the, the points that they brought out as ways in which they can address, they would like their, their countries to address this particular uh, crisis that we're, we're facing and to engage with COP26. So feel great was the, the acronym summarized their ask, but be great was what they asked the governments to budget and execute these promises is, is the way they remember these asks of their own. Uh, so, uh, and actually through Anne, we got to know that there were lots of side events we were very, very late in, in uh, trying to apply for this. But we did, we have openings now through our partners, Save the Children, Plan International, UNICEF are organizing side events. And it's through them, through that back door that we're entering in. In fact, we've engaged with, um, with the UNICEF over the months now and engaged young people from the most uh, vulnerable communities of India uh, through our children's parliaments to really express their own, own perspectives on climate change. Uh, so we have children from Assam, for example, whose, whose uh, uh, houses have been washed away by the floods of the Brahmaputra, uh, children uh, from other parts who, who have issues with, uh, with pollution, like in Delhi, or access to water and so on. So they've come in with, with, their, uh, with their asks. But we've engaged children from privileged backgrounds to mentor these children, and in so doing, hear conversations of each other. They're mentoring each other, and uh, the young ones who are from vulnerable communities will then take part in the UNICEF's platform at the end. I think it's mentioned uh, here, the climate crisis, the child rights crisis uh, of the UNICEF, and other platforms as well uh, through the back door. Uh, I, there's a link down below of the events happening, the site events as they call, uh, or I think Anne Nich uh, Nichols referred to them as green events uh, happening there. And uh, we've got some of our speakers uh, from the Indian network present there. So uh, we'll be trying to engage with that conversation too by interacting with them and asking them to represent some of our conversations there, but also to get us to, to see whether we can just be uh, onlookers and at least get the recordings of this conversation and come back to our young summiteers here in India and across the world. Into the way, into the future, one Sunday, one Saturday each uh, month will be dedicated to the Earth Summit conversations and to get them to understand the science of climate change. Uh, we intend pushing the Earth Summit to evolving into the Earth Parliament different words, but it actually had different meanings. The summit could be to anyone who's interested to come in, but to be part of the parliament, uh, there has to be ongoing, steady, weekly conversations with local communities for them to really represent a parliament uh, in uh, at the international level. We already have this concept in India and we actually have it in the national parliament of India already as a regular uh, annual uh, affair. Uh, this year, we're going to have two, the second one being a less formal uh, conversation because the more formal it goes and the, when you enter parliament, all protocols come into place and becomes more or less like a, a, a show rather than actual conversations. And so with the parliamentarians, uh, the, the convener of the parliamentary forum for children, young children are going to have an informal session with, with uh, representatives from all the parties of India. Uh, in parliament itself. So to also to promote child rights and particularly pro-activists of the earth, we instituted awards for young people. This is right now, right now only for Indians, but really to encourage young people in the conversation of rights, uh, in, including two more, one is for the Karuna warriors this year and for child parliamentarians too, and for mental health. Too. But really to recognize that there are many young people who now uh, entering into their space, the space of, of rights and advocacy, and we want to actually recognize that. Uh, into the future, we've already, uh, we've already got the license to run a TEDx countdown. Uh, this year's countdown is purely and, fo uh, and focused, focused on, uh, on COP26 and all the conversations you've been hearing today, as well as the themes of COP26 are really reflected in the speakers who are going to speak this year. These were last year's speakers. We have new speakers this year. But on the 10th of September, December, we're given the license to bring in children from across India on, 
on an online platform. So they'll hear these speakers and have their own conversations towards actually driving our Indian government to uh, to really engage with the climate change conversation with the perspective of children. Uh, before I go to this, explain this last one, you've, you've seen it before, but uh, we're also simultaneously having a survey with children on the a review on the Convention on the Rights of the Child. But in that same survey, we have questions on how on budgeting and what would young people like India to budget and invest in. We also have conversations on earth rights of children, which is not really in the convention, but we took something from the the child rights, uh, the day of general discussion and Geneva of children. And there, there's a declaration on uh, climate and children. And we, we are piggybacking on that document to be deeper with young people. But uh, as I wind up, you can see there in the top uh, left hand corner, just below the sign interpreter, Tom and Harvey, and you have Anne Nichols there in the on our screen as well. So uh, these three, uh, through these three, we're taking our, uh, they've, uh, uh, they've uh, ac are happily accepted to take our document, our charter to the COP26 as young people expressing themselves and taking, uh, claiming their space in this uh, conversation itself. So thanks, Anne, for supporting us with that. And thanks to Tom and Harvey for uh, being part of our conversations and taking these conversations to COP26. So before I finish, I would like to, this is the, the one nation in the world that has incorporated environment into their visa. So if you go to Palau, which is in the Pacific Islands, um, your, your passport will be stamped with this pledge. I've adapted it today for this evening. And I'm gonna ask all of us to read out this pledge while we envision the world community now pledging themselves to give our children and to give ourselves a cleaner, greener, just and sustainable world. So together with your mics uh, uh, muted is okay. We'll say it together. Children of the earth, I take this pledge as a guest to preserve and protect our beautiful and unique home. I vow to tread lightly, act kindly, and explore mindfully. I shall not take what is not given. I shall not harm what is not that does not harm me. The only footprints I shall leave are those that will wash away. Thank you. And over to you now, uh, Steve. So I think COP46 has really uh, raised the conversations up high about something that's very crucial. And we're getting the science behind COP uh, around climate change right now. And that's brought, it's important. And I think with that information, I think it's important for all our school communities and all our NGO uh, leaders and so on to read more about it, to look at the wonderful videos available, lovely animated movies available on the entire conversation, educate themselves and find the links at the grassroots. But for, for teachers, find the links with your classroom and see where does SDGs and where does um, where do does COP26 relate to your relate to your textbook, but more importantly relate to the last child and the last person, uh, the last being of our Earth community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. And now I turn to our team, and I'll start with Kevin Mullen. Okay, Kevin, uh, over to you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Tino. Well, first of all, I think we can see, I mentioned in my introductions at the beginning that there'd been a lot of attention in the worldwide media about COP26, but I think we've learned today all the actions and the steps that have been taken in preparation for COP26 in our own Evan Rice network, ranging across the whole, the whole world, really. And just to say a word about Ireland, Ireland passed a law about its climate change uh, plans back in July. And that's going to be actually implemented. The plan is going to be announced, I think, next month. So I'd be saying to people in Ireland, young people and teachers and schools and our own network, to keep an eye out for the announcement of the Climate Action Plan in Ireland in November. And then how do we continue to keep people on track to fulfill the actual parts of that plan that are announced? So that could apply to other countries as well, because as Buddy told us, there's going to be a, a renewal of commitment to the actual contributions that countries are going to make towards uh, uh, the reduction of emissions. 
uh, at COP26, following COP21 in Paris. So if nations are going to be renewing their plans and their pledges, I think we have to keep our countries on track as well. So I'd leave it like that, Tino. Thank you very much, Kevin. And I turn to our next team member from New York, Kevin Cawley. Over to you, Kevin. Yes, uh, good morning again from New York. Uh, this has been a wonderful experience for me over here, listening and uh, seeing what's been going on. I certainly appreciate uh, the chance to say a few words. Uh, people may be aware that right now we're uh, honoring uh, Dante, 700th anniversary of Dante and his uh, wonderful work, in particular his, his uh, poetry. There's a phrase from Dante that I think is worth putting in front of us. Uh, it's the Latin phrase, sic vos non vobis. Uh, it's Latin. In English, it's for you, but not yours. And it was Dante's uh, chastising of a plagiarist who was copying his work. And his, his warning to the plagiarist was, yes, this is for you, but it's not yours. And I think we could take that uh, to heart in terms of how we treat the planet. Yes, sic uh, vos non vobis, it's for you, but it's not yours. So thanks again and God bless. Thank you very much, Kevin. And Brian, I now hand over to you for your, for your comments, as well as for your closing remarks and for your thank yous. Over to you, Brian. Okay, thanks, Tino. Um, I was also attracted to those couple of questions that Anne referred to um, one from Sister Georgina, I'm not sure where she's based, and one from Butchers in the, in the, in the Philippines about how do we uh, engage with students who are perhaps marginalised and not in mainstream schools or perhaps have limited access to the internet. And, and I don't really have an, an answer to that, but I, I'm happy to sort of uh, try and explore and facilitate ways of... Uh, of uh, uh, of helping that to happen, so um, I just I just uh, uh, note that, and Anne did mention the ERI newsletter, and I know that the Edmund Rice Network in England has a website, which maybe Anne could share the link in in the chat, and uh, that's where you can go and get information. But then the challenge is to share that perhaps with uh, more marginalised youth who, who who don't have access to that uh, information. Anyway, um, that brings us uh, to the end of our webinar, and I'd just like to thank our panellists, Buddy, Anne and Steve for their presentations, to uh, Kevin for his participation in the panel, uh, uh, or both Kevins for their participation in the panel discussions, and to Tino and perhaps Franka in the background for his organisation of this event. And finally, I thank all of our participants who have joined us today, and I hope we've succeeded in raising awareness about the importance of COP26, this most important event for the future of our shared home. I'd also add that our concern and involvement with this issue doesn't stop at the end of COP26. Whatever pledges are made by government must be followed up with action to implement the steps necessary to deliver on those pledges. And we can all play a role in holding our governments to account and helping to ensure that that happens. So I hope today's webinar has inspired you to continue to take action to ensure the future of our planet, particularly for our young people and the generations yet to come. So on that note, we formally end our webinar. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>